Yes, yeah, so I'm Tony Birch. I'm a writer based in Melbourne and I work in a lot of different genres. So a lot of my work's in fiction, short fiction and the novel. Um, I also write poetry and I write essays and the essays are mainly based around place and landscape and history. I think the first time that I really called myself a writer was when I saw my first book, Shadowboxing, in the window at Reading's Bookshop on Ligon Street and um, I think they vindicated the fact that I could say, yeah, I'm a writer. I'm drawn to writing, I think, for a really straightforward reason. I, I think writing for me is the, is the way I make sense of the world. So I think I'm innately quite a curious person. I, I think I'm really observant. And when I observe something long enough and it sort of gives me a bit of an, an itch that I have to scratch, writing's just a way of making sense of the world. So when I put words down on paper or if I write a story or a poem, it's a way of understanding what I've seen around me. I think stories are a basic human right. I think if you deny someone the right to tell their story, I think you're, you're taking away someone's fundamental human right. And with that, I think as, as readers or listeners, I think stories are so important to us to hear what someone has to say, to listen to someone's story, to pay them respect and to pay them dignity. And I think by sharing stories, there's a greater chance that we get to understand each other. Um, we get to understand difference, so that when people talk about diversity and difference in the community, I think it only matters if you, if you give respect to someone else's story. Place is vital to my writing, and I think books that I'm attracted to as a reader are places a real character rather than simply a characteristic. So a lot of my work is set around the inner city of Melbourne and around this waterway, the Birrarung. And I think that place is so important because it not only informs the history that we are part of, but I think it also informs who we are as people. So when I come down to this place or when I think about my historical relationship to this place, it not only impacts on me emotionally, it has, it's a real driving force to think about what I want to write and how I want to write. Narrative story is always being performed in place. So when we visit the river, there is something happening here which is about the life history of the river, whether it be something about the waterway itself or the people who are here visiting, you know, walking their dogs, sitting around, whatever. The story is happening, it's a performance. So as a writer, I like to engage with that and sometimes try and capture that. So it's where I do a lot of observational work around place to, to get a sense of a story as it unfolds. We're at Deep Rock. Um, this is the old Deep Rock swimming basin. So when I was a teenager, there was a ruin here, which was a swimming pool that was built into the river about 60 years earlier. And this is where we hung out as kids, as teenagers. The swimming pool's gone, of course, but it's still a place that I'm attracted to. And probably this stretch of the river, I've probably walked or run along here or been swimming along here for over 50 years. So for me, it's a seminal place of spirituality. It's a, it's a remarkable place to visit. And it is, of course, as I've said before, a great inspiration for my writing. In 2015, I published a novel called Ghost River. The novel set in 1970. It's a novel about two boys who try and save the river or a section from the river from the desecration of the construction of a, a freeway through here. And it's about their relationship with a group of homeless men led by an Aboriginal man called Tex or Texas. So the novel's really about the relationship between a group of homeless men and teenage boys along this riverway in the early 1970s. For Wurundjeri people, so for Wurundjeri people who are the um, owners of this country, um, this river, the Birrarung, is not only important in a contemporary sense, it's a really important waterway and riverway and surrounds in, in deep time. So that this river is millions of years old in the making this landscape and this waterway itself, there are old river systems that flow through here that predate European occupation by tens of thousands of years. So it has that remarkable ongoing connection for Aboriginal people in Melbourne. My writing is strongly about working class people and Aboriginal people. I think what I'm inspired about is people's vitality, people's strength under duress, 
and people's ability to, to take care of each other under very difficult circumstances. So, yeah, the, where I grew up and the people I grew up amongst were people who in some ways were marginalised, really disempowered, people who didn't have much, but I felt that I grew up in really strong communities. So a lot of my writing focuses on telling stories and recovering the stories of, of those communities. We're at the Affin Garden Housing Estate, the public housing estate. It's been here for about 50 years. It's called Affin Gardens because it's named after Afferton Street, which is where I lived as a kid. So this whole area in the old measurements, about 13 acres, this was home to hundreds of families and businesses, um, pubs, cafes, um, schools. And this is where I grew up. And this whole area was demolished to make way for this public housing estate in about 1966. What I love about public housing estates now, and I still have family that live on them, is that they're often really maligned, but I think the people who live here make these places work, and people who live on public housing estates have always made them work, and a lot of the communities that live on the Fitzroy estate and other estates around the inner city, they're new arrivals to Australia, so they're often people who come from refugee communities, and I think they turn these places into real places of home for themselves. It was a great area to live in as a kid. Um, all my family and extended family were here, so we had about eight households in two streets. Um, I sold papers here, I went to school here, and really I didn't have a life outside this area. I never left the boundaries of what are now the estate, except to go to opposition football grounds in the old VFL. So it was the only place I knew, it was everything I knew, and when it was demolished, it was really heartbreaking to have to leave here. My most recent book, The White Girl, is a work that I'm really proud of. Um, I've published a lot of work, but that book in particular, I set out to tell a story about the, the strength of Aboriginal women and, and girls and the, the enormous effort that Aboriginal people have gone to to keep families intact and to protect families, particularly children, from removal. And I know that when I finished the manuscript, I felt very satisfied that I'd done what I set out to do. And then with the publication of that book, which has been really well received, I've been really pleased with readership. So I'm really proud of the outcome and the way that that book now exists in the world. Uh, we're in George Street, Fitzroy, and we're at the front of my grandmother's old house. So when our houses were demolished in Fitzroy for the Affin Gardens estate. We moved to a housing estate in Richmond, but my grandmother moved here to George Street. And it was a really important house for us because it was the place that we still were able to come to in Fitzroy. So for many years, I'd come to my nan's place here um, of every Monday night, so I still went to the Cubs here in Fitzroy. And it was, in a way, the Fitzroy base that we were able to keep for many years. Oh, I had a great relationship with my nan, so she lived next door to us in Afferton Street for many years. She lived here for many years, and then when she got older, she moved on to a public housing estate in North Fitzroy, and um, I visited her quite often. So I was very lucky my grandmother lived well into her 80s, and. Um, we had a very close relationship and she was someone that for my childhood I saw almost every day of my life, so we had a really strong bond. I love the stories that come out of this city and friends of mine who are also writers who write about Melbourne, um, Christos Cholkos, um, Arnold Zabel, um, these are people who have, a lot of their writing is based in the city, so it's both when you read books about Melbourne, when you read literature about Melbourne, there's both a familiarity, so you, you, you'll know those places to some extent, but there's also surprise because what writers are doing when they're writing about this city, they're introducing you to stories that you didn't know. So you, you get that excitement when you read stories that are, that are new to you in a place that you think you know so well.
So this is St Mark's Church in George Street, Fitzroy, and I used to come here every Monday night to Cubs, to Second Fitzroy Cub Group, where I became a sixer. It's where I learned to start a fire and tie a knot. And I went to a Catholic school around the corner, Sacred Heart, and because that was a Catholic school, but this was a Protestant church, the nuns told us that we were never to go to the Cubs in a Protestant church, so I used to have to sneak here every Monday night hoping that I wouldn't be caught by one of my teachers having sinned by going to another religion. I love living in this area because I know all the streets and the back lanes really well. I obviously write about this area, I take a lot of photographs around here and while the suburb has changed so much over the last 50 years, I still feel a strong affinity and attachment to this place and I still feel as I walk around here that the memories that I experienced here are really close to me and I feel at home here. Oh, look, all my books are about the same issue, about redemption or a failure to redeem. So I'm interested in people who are, who are in a sense failures in some ways and I don't say that in a negative way. And a lot of my work is about people, about characters who are trying to redeem themselves, who are trying to reconnect with family, reconnect with community and they succeed or fail in doing that in various ways. So I'm really interested in, in the flaws in society, I'm really interested in the flaws in people and you know, to convey the idea that, that life is actually difficult and that's what I enjoy about it.